Hey guys, welcome to Aurora Graphics. My name is Grant Dorsey and this week we're going to go through an entire workflow of starting with a transparent TIFF image in Photoshop and creating a print cut image out of it and then I'm actually going to show you how to run through VersaWorks and print and cut on a rolling 54 inch. Um, before we get going here I just wanted to say something about the Photoshop version that I'm using. Um, this is the only version of Photoshop that I could get to run at a speed fast enough with my capture software, my screen capture software, to uh, actually get things speedy enough where you guys wouldn't click away um, immediately. So <clears throat> it's we're going to be doing stuff in uh, Photoshop CS2 right now. The Creative Cloud was just bogging my system down to a ridiculous slow, and um, but the good news is, is that all the functionality and, and things that I'm doing in, in CS2 are still available in the new Photoshop. Uh, in fact, you'll probably have more control if you're running the Creative Cloud. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do here, it's always good practice to make a duplicate of your image, especially if you're buying uh, images from us. That way you don't end up overriding the original. And so uh, we're just going to do that by going image duplicate and it's going to ask you if you want to make a copy and you just say okay. Uh, then we'll get rid of the original and now we're working with just a copy of the image. Uh, so the next thing you're going to want to do is to increase the canvas size and this is going to allow us to, to make the stroke that we need so that if you, if you notice right up here on the body of the snake he actually goes clear to the edge of the canvas. So what we need to do is make that bigger so our stroke doesn't get cut off. So uh, under image, we'll go to canvas size here, and we can just go up. We're only going to do a four pixel stroke on this, so we could actually just go up eight pixels, but it really doesn't matter. You can just go up a little ways. Notice I click on the width or the height that allows me to just slide right and left to increase the canvas size, and so that should give us plenty of room there. And the next thing we're going to do, let me zoom back out. I'm going to come down here and erase some of this drop shadow. That way whenever we add our stroke it doesn't make a huge blob down here. And just, so I'm just going to grab the eraser quick. Make sure our hardness is up. I just right click there to get the, the brush settings up. Take my diameter up a bit and just click and hold and then get as close as you can. It's not that important because uh, we're going to end up making our cut contour by hand anyways. Just get it close in there like this. And you could also do that with the selection tool if you prefer, if it'd be faster for you. Just make a selection area and delete it. Okay, so now we've got rid of that. I'll get my magnifying glass. And so the reason for adding a stroke before you do a cut contour is obviously going to be so that you don't end up with a white edge around here where your white vinyl actually didn't print outside where the cut was. So if you, you know, the, the idea is to have your print bleed out just a little bit over the edge of where you're going to cut. So if we double click this layer, you'll get the layers palette. You can also find this under layer, layer style. And then you just click one of these, drop shadow or whatever, and it'll pull up the box. Uh, we don't actually want to drop shadow. We're going to go with the stroke. And if you notice, uh, there's only a couple of different options here. You can choose a color or a pattern or a gradient. And uh, let's go with black here. So I'm going to go with a color. And if you notice here on his teeth and around the gums, the black looks horrible. There's some areas around this edge that don't look too bad you could in fact come in here and just pick a color you know that's part of his body and that doesn't look too bad but then again if you come back over here to the teeth that kind of looks silly so I'm going to show you a little trick here where we can actually make this stroke the exact same color as the snake so we'll double click again go back to our stroke and it doesn't really matter what color this is we'll just leave it red so we can see it and uh, we're gonna go up to four pixels and the reason why we're going to do that is because if you try to do just a three pixel stroke, you'll end up trying to divide a pixel in half when we uh, come back in to make our exact line that you'll follow to, to do your cut contour. So um, 
it'll just make a more definitive line to follow. So we're going to go ahead and go with four pixels here on this. And then if you right click this little circle here, you can come down here and, and create a layer from your layer styles. So if you had a whole bunch of layer styles, drop shadows, this and that, it would uh, create layers from them. And so now we, if I turn off the main layer, you can see we've got just that stroke and it's solid all the way around. And um, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is you guys, if, if you're going to go in and do any work like this, I would suggest doing it at full scale. Don't shrink the image down to you know what your customer is after uh, because inevitably later down the line you'll wish you'd done it at full scale and you won't have to go back and redo it it'll always fit and shrink down and print nice and uh, save you a lot of hassle in the future if you have to do it again so uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to load selection on the stroke here so you can do that by holding down control and just clicking the picture of it in the layers palette or you can go up here and select and click load selection and it's going to ask you what layer layer zero stroke is that the one you want to load selection on and yes that's the name of it so we click OK and you notice it puts some marching ants right there on the edge now what I'm going to do is uh, right click this layer and click duplicate layer now if you if you click on the picture of the layer it's going to give you a set of different things and so what you want to do is make sure you click out here in the in the negative space next to the name and uh, we'll go duplicate layer and then I'm going to drag this down here below our original snake that is going to be our print file and uh, so what we'll do next is because we did a four pixel stroke and I've got my selection area out here so we're everything that we're you're, we're going to be doing currently is going to be within that selected area so I've made my duplicate and now I'm going to go up here to filter and go to blur and then down to Gaussian blur and since we actually did our pixel uh, or our stroke excuse me to four pixels what we're going to do is our our blur radius also to four pixels and that'll give us the least amount of blur but still cover the four pixels that we did on our stroke and, uh, so the next thing we can do is we can turn off this red layer and we'll turn off the main snake layer I'm just going to call this uh, blurred so that you can see it here and uh, know what we're doing. So I can either right click and click duplicate layer a whole bunch of times or I can just hold alternate like this and click and drag out copies Oops, like this. And you notice as I drag out copies this area right in here is starting to get darker and dark or excuse me uh, more opaque you can't see the checkerboard back behind it which is uh, obviously a transparent area so to make this faster I'll, I'll click the top one here and then hold shift and click the bottom one and it'll select all of these and now when I hold alternate and drag out I get a whole bunch of copies at once and now we've pretty well filled that in completely and it doesn't have to go all the way to the edge because remember our cut line is going to come just inside of here so now what I'm going to do is layer zero, that was our first original. We don't want to merge that in with these, but we're going to go to the first blurred copy. And then we're going to go clear down to the last one. And then we're going to go layer, merge layers. You can see the hot key for that is hold control and hit the letter E. So uh, now when we turn back our sn snake back on, you can see that we've got a stroke that actually follows the color of the actual snake itself all the way around as we get to the teeth here and the pink gums you can tell the the stroke actually changes color right exactly with it so that looks nice it's way better than uh, just picking a color or a gradient <laughs> so what we're going to do and and uh, next here is hit control D to, to deselect or select deselect and now what we want to do is select the snake, the original copy here, hold down control and click it to load selection on it, or you can go select load selection and make sure that your selection area is on that snake. And then we're going to go select modify expand by one pixel. Now, excuse me, not one pixel, edit step backwards. We're going to, we're going to modify and expand this by two pixels. 
And that should put us a line right down the very center of our stroke. And now, under the paths palette, if you don't see this palette sticking up in your, in your deal, you can find it under window paths. And we're going to come over here and the, what looks like a little circle with some pigtails coming off of it down here at the bottom, if I hold still, it'll say make work path from selection. So we're going to click that. And now you can see what it did is make a real lazy, what they call as a work path, you know, it's sim similar to a vector here in uh, Photoshop. And you will have to uh, clean this up in a vector program, obviously. So next what we're going to do is export these images as their uh, respective files so that they can go into a vector program and we can finish creating our cut contour. So first thing we're going to do is export our path. I'm going to go file export paths to Illustrator and I'm going to rename this with a WP at the end. It's going to be an AI file so don't tread on me 3 is the is the file that we're working with and I'm going to write WP after that so that I know it's the work path and that just saved out this line that we made to a work path. Now I can right click this and delete the path since we're done with that. And uh, just to save file si size, we're going to save this as a JPEG because there's no more work that needs done to this image. So we're going to call this Don't Tread on Me 3 Print Cut File. Excuse me, we're just going to call it Print File. And that way we know that's our that's our print file. We're going to discard layers and save a copy. You could save it as JPEG, save it as a, a flattened TIFF. It, it really doesn't matter. Just make sure you don't save the transparency and you discard layers and save a copy if you do a TIFF. Now, uh, the next thing we want to do is uh, make a real definitive line where we can actually come in here and, and create our stroke without having to try to guess how, how far the distance is from here to here. So we'll get rid of this blurred copy turn back on this red copy and what I'm gonna do here look we can even get rid of this uh, print file here and uh, so what we're gonna do here is double click this if you double click the word itself you notice it just wants you to rename it so you try to get away from the word and double click out here and it'll get your layer styles palette up now what we're gonna, whoops, let's go with a uh, color overlay first. I'm gonna turn this completely black and then click OK. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is come in with a stroke. And if you notice here, it says outside, we're gonna go to the inside and we wanna come in two pixels. Remember, that's exactly where we want our cut line to, to fall. So we're gonna come in two pixels, make our color of our stroke, whatever color you want. Red kind of works, but uh, in Flexi, the when you select a point, the path turns red to let you know that it's it's working. So I try to pick a different color, something that's going to stand out and be easy to see, but will also allow you to, to view the vector. So anything, you know, like yellow or, or any color really will work, as long as it's going to contrast with your actual vector line in the program. So uh, now that we've got this, we can go layer and flatten image. That's going to put a white background behind it. And so now, if you remember our work path, we're just going to lay it right in here along the black and yellow edge. And if we follow that perfectly, it should be exactly two pixels all the way around. And uh, so give me a couple minutes here, guys, and I'll save this out and get Flexi popped open, and I'll show you how to create the vector. Okay, so it looks like uh, with the YouTube settings that I'm limited to 15 minute videos, so we're going to have to do this in a two or three part series. So uh, with this, the Photoshop being part one, uh, part two is going to be in Flexi, and I'll put a link for that down in the description below. And um, until next time, thank you.